Can we program the Yezu FT5 with Chirp? Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So first, a big shout out to Mike who writes Mike's tech blog for a fantastic article he put together on getting this done. And I greatly appreciate him sending it over to me so I could make this video for you guys. You will need a RT Systems cable for this particular project. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. You don't have to buy the software, just the cable by itself, and that should set you back around 30 bucks. So let's go ahead and head over to the computer and see exactly how this is done. Okay, so I've already got the USB cable plugged into one of the ports on the computer, and you can see that by us just running LS USB from the terminal. And you can see that the cable is listed right here. That's an RT Systems CT68 radio cable. The problem comes in though that the cable is not being assigned a USB port. So we can see that if we run ls space forward slash dev space, and I'm gonna pipe that through grip and search for TTY USB and the star symbol. So all I'm looking for is any USB port. That's what that star represents out there. We'll go ahead and press return and you'll see that we get nothing uh, returned to us. So that tells us that that cable has not been assigned a USB port. So let's cover two different ways to do this. Let me show you the quick and dirty way first and then we'll show you a better way to do it here in just a minute. The first thing I'm going to do here is go ahead and drop into my root user. We do that by running sudo space su and going ahead and entering our root password. The next thing we want to run is modprobe space ftdi underscore sio. And what this is going to do is this is going to go ahead and load the driver for that USB device that we've got plugged in. So let's go ahead and press return. Next up, we're going to run this command, echo space 2100 space 9068 space, and then we're going to redirect that to this file name here. So this uh, forward slash sys forward slash bus forward slash USB hyphen serial forward slash drivers forward slash FTDI underscore SIO forward slash new underscore ID. Boy, is that a mouthful. Let's go ahead and press return on that command there. Now let's exit back out to our normal user. At this point, if we run that ls forward slash dev and grip for TTY USB, you will see that we now have a USB port. And at this point, you can go ahead and jump over into Chirp and use uh, the TTY USB 0 as your connection point to the radio. Here's the problem with doing this method though. It won't survive a reboot. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick reboot of this machine and I'll be right back with you guys. After the reboot, I do have that cable still plugged in and you can see that if we run LS USB. You can see the cable listed right there in that. But now let's run the list of the dev directory and grep for that USB port. And you will see that once again, that port does not exist. So the first method will not survive a reboot. Let me show you guys a better method. So let's go ahead and head over to github.com forward slash km4ack. Once you're here, let's go ahead and click on PyScripts. Now, don't worry about it being named PyScripts. This will work on uh, the Raspberry Pi or it will work on x86 machines. You're looking for this 99-ftdi.rules. Let's go ahead and click into that. Once we get into this screen, let's go ahead and click the raw button. And the reason I want to do it this way is sometimes with copy and paste, depending on your browser and your font set and whatnot, you can run into some issues. And that's exactly what happened to me when I tried to copy and paste this and get this to working. There were some characters that just weren't right. 
once I replaced those, I got everything up and running. Now that we're on uh, this page here where you're seeing nothing but basically a blank screen with this one line of text, or actually it looks like two, but this is one line of text here at the top. What we want to do is we want to come up to the address bar and highlight everything and then go ahead and copy that. At this point, we can minimize the browser and go back to our terminal. Let's run the wget command and paste in that link that we just copied. Go ahead and press return. Now, if we, I'm going to clear that screen. Let's run the ls command and you will see this 99 hyphen ftdi.rules. We just need to put that in the correct directory. We will need to use sudo to do that. So let's run sudo space mv for move and then 99 hyphen ftdi.rules. We're going to put that in forward slash etc forward slash udev forward slash rules dot d forward slash. Once you get that command typed out onto the screen, let's go ahead and press return. It's going to ask me for my password again. We'll give it that, and that takes care of moving the rule to exactly where we need it. Now, we just need to reload things so that uh, the system knows about this new rule. To do that, we're going to run sudo space udev adm space control space hyphen hyphen reload. Let's go ahead and press return and that should take care of it. Now if you do still have your cable plugged in you will need to unplug and replug that cable after you've run this last command with the reload. That way the system sees it being plugged in and will go ahead and load everything for us. We can verify everything is working correctly by running the ls space forward slash dev and then piping that into the grip command and searching for TTY USB star. Once we press return, you'll see that we are now, uh, we now have this TTY USB zero and this method will survive a reboot. So now let's go ahead and take a look at using this with Chirp. So I'm going to exit out of the terminal window and we'll go ahead and fire up uh, Chirp. Once Chirp opens up, let's go ahead and click on radio and download from radio. You want to choose that forward slash dev forward slash TTY USB zero in this first window. Uh, yours probably won't be there at the very beginning. You'll probably have to open up the drop down box and scroll to the very bottom of this screen where you'll find that TTY USB zero. Go ahead and select Yezu for the vendor. And the model number, you will not find an FT5. We're going to go ahead and use the FT3 as the model. Let's go ahead and press OK here, and you're going to be given some directions. Now, these directions are incorrect, uh, mainly because it tells us to press and hold the DISP button on the radio while turning it on. Well, the FT5 doesn't have a DISP button. Instead, we're going to press and hold the F menu. Now, go ahead and make sure that you do have the cable plugged into the radio and you want it plugged into the computer. On the FT5, I'm going to press and hold this F menu and go ahead and turn on the radio. It should come up into a screen that says clone and then you'll have a receive and send button. On the computer, we're going to go ahead and press OK on the screen and then we're going to click send on the radio. That will start the cloning process. Now, if you've cloned other radios before using Chirp, you may think that this thing uh, is almost broken because it is extremely slow compared to other radios. It's just got a lot of data that it's transferring. But we'll give this just a couple of minutes and it should clone the radio into the Chirp application. Once it finishes up, you should see everything open up into the Chirp spreadsheet. Now, the one thing to note is I haven't figured out a way to change things to use digital. So if you see my hotspot right here, uh, it's showing that it's in FM mode. That is actually programmed in as digital. 
uh, but for whatever reason, Chirp is not seeing that. So you might have to make a couple of tweaks after you get this file uh, uploaded back to the radio. But for the most part, Chirp gives us full functionality for programming that radio. You can even see your memory banks over here. And I've got some that's uh, already filled out. You've got your bank names, so you can change those if you wish. And you've got some other settings. So uh, APRS mainly, but we've got DTMF, miscellaneous, scan, and backtrack. I'm not even sure what backtrack is, but we'll try to figure that out maybe in a future video. All right, guys, as you can see, I need to add some more things to my radio. So I'm going to go get that done and then upload those to the radio. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.